Hi, I'm Dr. AJ Chua and welcome to Adjusting Your Heart, where we talk about mental health and relationship issues. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Sow a thought and reap an action. Sow an act and reap a habit. Sow a habit and reap a character. Sow a character and reap a destiny. That's the flow of my videos this August. First, I talk about how to get rid of a negative thought. Then, I talk about how to get rid of a toxic habit. Today, my topic is about how to get rid of a negative trait. So let me share with you three tips on how to achieve that. My friends, please take a look at this pair of black jeans. If you notice closely, there are molds in various places. That's because I didn't notice the small mold the first time it appeared. If I did, I would have immediately washed it and the mold wouldn't have spread. In the same way, if we don't change the way we think, then we put it into action, it becomes a habit and eventually would become a trait that would define our personality. The good news is, just as I can wash these pants to take away all the molds, we can revamp the way we think, the way we act, and consequently improve our personality. So let me move on to my first point, to acknowledge that it's a negative trait. We'll know it's a negative trait when we turn people off. And some people would have the guts to tell us face to face that what we did or what we said hurt them. One trait all of us should be wary of is selfishness. Selfishness is being too totally absorbed in ourselves that we don't care about the people around us. We think that we're always right and we don't listen to the suggestions of others. Or maybe you have a hot temper and would lash out every time you're angry. You raise your voice or fist and that truly causes chaos in your various relationships. If you're not sure what your negative traits are, you may take these two online personality tests for free. You can check out the five minute personality test by April O'Leary or the Litter's personality test. They're not 100% accurate, but they are good gauge to know your strengths and weaknesses or our weaknesses are also our negative traits. So do take the test and comment below. What's the result of your test? For me, I took these two tests. I'm an author and a sanguine. My second point is to replace that negative trait with a positive one. My friends, there's no perfect personality. All of us have our own strengths and weaknesses, but the weaknesses may be perceived as negative traits by others. So after taking the test, choose one negative trait that you want to improve. When I realized that one of my weaknesses as a sanguine was that I was a compulsive talker. I tried to replace that by being a better listener. So during parties or reunions, instead of me talking the whole time, I've learned to listen. I've learned to ask questions so that people would also be able to share their thoughts during the conversation. And by replacing my tendency to talk all the time, I learned to be a good listener, which helps me in my career as a guidance counselor. There are so many resources that can help you get rid of that negative trait and to be able to develop a healthier one. If you're a bookworm like me, reading books such as this. This book is by Dr. Les Carter entitled People Pleasers. I've read this, but I'll share my insights in one of my future videos. Or you can read articles in the internet. You can watch YouTube videos, TED Talks. You have to commit to changing that three by first being aware of it and then thinking of how to overcome it. Better still, learn from those who are exhibiting the traits that you want to develop. And that's our third point. So my third point is connect with people who possess the positive trait that you want to develop. Look for mentors or friends who are already exhibiting that trait. In my case, it came about naturally. Thanks to Hannah Tan Yu, you can check out this picture I took with her and Becky and also with her husband Noel and two sons when they visited me in Boston. She was my college classmate in Saint School and the only one who graduated magna cum laude in our batch. And through her, I learned how to be punctual and accomplish tasks 
earlier than the deadline. Prior to that, I was a crammer, procrastinator, and habitually late. So being my thesis mate, I worked closely with her. She taught me the importance of finishing the projects, not only on time, but usually a day or two before the deadline. That's because she said we have to anticipate emergencies. True enough, because sometimes, let's say if the deadline would be Friday, what if we want to cram it on a Thursday night and suddenly there's a major blackout? Left on my own, I'm not sure my thesis would have received distinction. And if I got a lower grade, I doubt that I would have graduated cum laude. So this is a picture of our diploma before, okay? So because we graduated with two degrees, so there are two diplomas. So I'd also like to challenge all of you to get rid of selfishness. Let's replace it with compassion. Let's all be others-centered to reach out and care for others, especially in this time of pandemic. So let me start off with the most decorated female track athlete in Olympic history, Alison Felix. This 35-year-old American garnered a total of 11 medals after competing in her fifth Olympics. What many of us don't know was that she was diagnosed with a very severe case of preeclampsia that threatened her life and that of her baby in 2018. Only on her 32nd week of pregnancy, she had to immediately undergo an emergency C-section. Her daughter, Cameron Grace, was born at 3 pounds and 7 ounces. And she had to spend her first month of life in the neonatal intensive care unit. So Allison partnered with Better Starts for All to help bring maternal health care to underserved communities, especially to communities of color. She also served as an ambassador for Right to Play since 2011. This was founded by fellow Olympian athlete Johan Olav Koss because he wanted to provide education to the world's most vulnerable children using the power of play. Another inspiring is how an Olympic volunteer went out of her way to help a Jamaican athlete. Hansley Parchment took the wrong bus and nearly missed the race. Tihania Stuchkovic, who's only 25, pointed him to the right direction and even gave him 10,000 yen for cab money. 10,000 yen is around 5,000 pesos. So when Hansley won the gold medal, he tracked her down and he showed her the gold medal and also gave her a Jamaican t-shirt and paid back her money. On top of that, the Jamaican government was so happy that they're giving Tihana a free trip to Jamaica. So my friend, her act of kindness strengthened the ties between Japan and Jamaica, and her one simple act of kindness proved to have ripple effects. So the next three people I'm going to feature are ordinary people with extraordinary love for others. I convinced them to allow me to share their stories, to inspire you so that more people can spread the love. Let me start off with Larry Ang. He is my husband's batchmate and also a member of Makati Gospel Church. As you can see from this picture, he is very passionate about Israel and has been there many times. He also encourages us to listen to Ari Bar David, a Jewish tour guide and Bible teacher. So when Brother Bernardo Villeneuve needed a quintuplet bypass, Larry volunteered to take care of him at the hospital that was last month. That's because Brother Burns' wife, Mrs. Helen Villeneuve, the principal of Makati Gospel Church New Life Christian Academy, can't do so because she was undergoing chemotherapy. And Janine, their eldest daughter who just graduated magna cum laude from La Salle, had to take care of her mom at home. Their youngest son, Seth, was only 17, so he wasn't allowed to stay in the hospital. So Larry offered. At first, the Villanuevas declined, but Larry convinced them that he was ready to do that. And God answered the prayers of his people. Brother Burns' bypass went smoothly, and he's now recuperating very well at home. As you can see from the pictures, he always have a joyous disposition in spite of the trials in their lives. Also, God kept Brother Bird and Larry free from COVID in their nine-day stay in the hospital. Next is my high school friend and Europe tourmate, Warren Lim Tiong Lin. He truly has the heart 
for those in need. Every time there's a calamity, whether it's an earthquake, typhoon, he would donate shirts because that's their family business together with his brothers, Willie and Wilson. And during the lockdown last year, they gave out sacks of rice, vegetables to their workers. And until now, they're giving out subsidies to the workers who are unable to work full time due to the slowdown in business. Moreover, Warren has been supporting teachers and also students in the provinces. And that has been ongoing for many years already. He is now a certified plantito, as you can see from the picture. So our Europe tour mates are looking forward to visiting his garden once the pandemic is over. Last but not the least is my friend Kevin. From the time I met him when he visited the Philippines in 2019, his heart is to help the Filipino people. He's not only a family nurse practitioner, but also a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. During this pandemic, he has donated money to those with cancer or those who contracted the COVID virus. He also sent money to those who have mental illness and financial needs. And I'm touched that he has helped some of the people featured in our videos. So my friends, if you want to get rid of a negative trait, the first step is to acknowledge that it's a negative trait. The second one is to replace that negative trait with a positive one. And the last is to connect with people who already possess that positive trait you want to develop. So now we'd like to thank some people, Abby Theodosio, James West Brown, Jed C, Jonathan and Rose Ku, Karen Atilano Luberio, Celeste Carandan, Miko Elores, Pagoda Lona, Unchu Juan, and Senaida Espiritu. So if you're blessed by this video, please like, subscribe, and share it. So see you next Friday as I talk about how to get out of a toxic relationship. And in case you want me to talk about some topics, just comment down below. Okay, so stay safe.